Hello and welcome back to another episode of Cody Underground. It's April 24th, 2014. I am Cody Willard and this is Cody Underground. Today I got a special treat for you guys. One on one, I go with Gerald Salente, publisher of Trends Journal. Let me just introduce Gerald Salente is. A, a, I consider him a friend. I, I, I he's been a frequent guest on my old show Happy Hour, and I've stayed in touch with him uh, since I left Fox, and mainly because he's brilliant and he's famous for forecasting trends and talking about uh, geopolitical uh, ramifications and forecasts and economic uh, outlooks and um, just general commentary about the state of society, too. So I'm thrilled to have uh, Gerald Salente join me today. Um, he is the publisher of Trends Journal, and we're going to jump right in and let him talk a little bit first about what are you forecasting for the rest of this year, Gerald, and uh, say maybe into next year for both the economy and uh, any major uh, geopolitical flashpoints that you're worried about. Well, before I go any further, I just want to let you know that Happy Hour was one of the best shows on TV. <laughs> I, I, and that's no, that's no Harvard line. I mean, I was on everybody, you know, Oprah, the Today Show. I was just on every, every show out there. And that was the neatest show around. Well, thank and, you so much. You were, I mean, we loved having you because you also had fun with us. You know, it's, uh, it's not, it wasn't a dry format. No, I mean, how could it be a dry format when you're sitting around a bar? <laughs> <laughs> it was, I have to say, it was a brilliant concept, and it was a great, I loved it while it lasted, but truly, I don't know that TV was uh, my calling. I much more enjoy being underground and um, and being an entrepreneur, doing the things I'm doing with Scudify.com and trading with Cody.com and some of my other ventures. Well, I just want to let you know that that was... Uh, you know, there's been nothing like it before or since, and uh, every show out there is dry and and they're packaged and they there's no life in them, you know. So, anyways, well, I I really appreciate the kind words, but this isn't about me today for sure, Gerald. Can you please dive right in? What do you okay? Think? What is your forecast? All right. Well, the forecast looking? on the economic front. I mean, everybody knows the story, and if they if they follow you. I mean, everybody knows the deal. As long as they keep dumping in cheap money into the system, whether it's coming from China, whether it's coming from this European Central Bank, whether it's coming from the Federal Reserve, as long as they keep pumping dough into the system, it's going to keep going on. It's a Ponzi scheme. And the other thing is, of course, these record low interest rates. Well, the only people that they're enriching are the traders, and the and the and the the banks and the financiers, you're seeing the 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 uh, the, um, the the merger and acquisition, the M and A uh, uh, markets booming because of all the cheap dough. The same thing with real estate. Oh, look what just happened! The new numbers came out on 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 new homes. They're down. I wonder why they went down. Well, the prices have gone, the houses have gone up, and the mortgage rates are going up. So as long as they keep dumping money into the system, keep interest rates low, it's going to continue to look the way it is now. What would be the catalyst for the change? And do we have to have a heartache, a crash, a crisis for the next uh, foundation, something a little more healthy of a found, uh, economic and political foundation for our country and the globe itself. Um, what's the process? How do we get to something better? Um, or do we just keep having inflating these bubbles like you're talking about until um, there's the biggest crisis, crash, depression of all time? Nothing is going to change, I believe, at this, you know, I've been at this now 35 years. And I I don't see it changing until the individuals change. You know, it's that hundredth monkey syndrome, you know, the story about, you know, how they taught a monkey how to do something in an island, then all the monkeys did it, 
and then in a monk, then in an island that was an, that was very far away, the monkeys started doing it as well. And and right now, you know, they say that the fish rots from the head down. When you look at the major governments around the world, they're run by 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 fish at the head that are rotted. <laughs> I mean, really. I mean, you want to. I, I don't disagree. I just love the phraseology. I mean, they truly, the rotten fish heads. And that's, yeah. the, that's what we have for leadership around the world in any developed country. But so, address it, though. Is there. Do we have to have a crisis and a crash? Are they going no, to. No, you see, I don't. Be, no, do I don't believe in that. I, be, I believe that if you have a crisis or a crash, things could get worse and then uh, get much worse after that. Just because things get worse, that doesn't mean they get better. It's kind of like a person going back again to the individual. Let's say a person, you know, doesn't take care of themselves. They're they're obese. They eat a lot of crappy food. They drink too much, and then they they go. You know, they, they get hit with a health crisis. How many people really, really change their lifestyle after the crisis? And how many continue to go on their on their old ways? So what I'm saying is a crisis could even bring in more draconian measures. It could become much worse. So I don't see it changing like that. Again, to me, where I am at my part, in my point of life, it's going to have to take a national movement of people, regardless of the country you're from. Look, and, 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 and just to, I, I don't mean to interrupt, but you're making such a, an important point there. You're saying that that national movement doesn't have to be catalyzed by some sort of depression or crisis or crash, it's not just stock market, not just economic, not just social, but we can actually get on a better trajectory path from here without the crisis needing to be the impetus. Absolutely. And, and again, the vacuum has never been larger. I mean, you know me, I'm a political atheist. I look at both parties, I mean, they're the bloods and the crips. And, and I don't mean it facetiously. They're murderers and they're thieves. How many more wars do they have to start? How many more people do they have to kill before people call them murderers? How much more money do they have to steal from us before I, they call them thieves? You have no idea how many times I would get stopped in the elevator in hallways at Fox or when I would go do appearances at any ABC or any other channel ever, and they would say to me, can you please pull back a little bit on your political rhetoric uh, when you're calling the Republican-Democrat regime a bunch of warmongering murderers, Cody, that's really radical. And I would look at these people and be like, no, the warmongering and murdering that the Republican-Democrat regime is doing is what's radical. And it goes back again to the question. Look at what the people would try. Look, the same thing happens with me all the time, and I don't get invited back, you know, because they don't <laughs> want to hear it. But again, look, going back to the question, does a crisis have to happen? Here you have what you would think are people that are intelligent calling you a radical as they keep buying the crap and supporting it. Correct, and propagandizing it for, in that case, when it's in the hallways of a television network. Exactly. So that's why I keep going back to it's the people. It's so the people. How do we get to this better platform that is non-Republican, non-Democrat? As far as I'm concerned, I'm radical enough to be anti-partisan at all. I don't want there to be parties. I want people to be free thinking. I think there's enough of a literate base in this country that people can write in who they want to be elected, and we'll just take whoever gets the most votes in each thing. Well, well, I agree with you. And again, I would not use that term radical. As you said, the Amen. radicals are the ones that are the, are the murderers and the thieves. Thank you for clarifying and straightening me out there. You're right. <laughs> And, and so going back to it, all right, here's number number one. You know, the new Trends Journal is going to be coming out on Monday. And I'm starting a movement. It's called Occupy Peace. And it's going to be the website we're building it as we speak, OccupyPeace.us. This is only for Americans because the on top of Occupy Peace is no foreign entanglements. 
Oh, I mean, wow. That is a good a good platform and basis that you're starting with there. I keep going. So here we are. I'm speaking from Colonial Kingston, New York. And this is this is the you know the the foundation of the the as part of the foundation of the Revolutionary War was right here. I mean the British burnt this joint down in 1777. You know this is the hey, you know by cost- the way you're you're talking to me in uh, Lincoln County, New Mexico, not famous only for the Lincoln County Wars with Billy the Kid, but I still am best friends with uh, kids whose last names are Geronimo, Larry Geronimo, and others who also are you know part of a revolutionary national movement concept that you're talking about. I just did, I wanted to connect some dots there. Well, that's great. And that's what we're talking about. Again, the people. And you said about enough people. Here's the way I look at it. 80% of the people will follow anything and do anything. You see them all over. They, 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 they eat crap. They buy corporate food. They eat corporate food. They, they have no minds. that They've lost it. They'll, but they'll follow good or bad. Whoever has the loudest voice, they'll follow. Other 10% are, I call, the destroyers. These are the people that are destroying things in front of us. These are the greedy, the immoral. The immoral. And again, I'm no preacher, man. I mean, I have my own life, you know. I mean, I, I'd be the last guy to say, oh, yes, I did everything just right, you know. No, no. I mean, you know, as you get older, you try to do learn more and you try to be, make yourself better. So I'm not telling people what to Amen. do or how to act. Amen. I'm going to make I'll that say, really I'll, clear. I'll say it like you are a preacher, Gerald, because you're preaching the word here, man. You're yeah. doing God's work. I do believe that. Yeah. Keep going. Well, so anyway, then there's, then there's the 10% that you're talking about, the builders. And now it's time for the builders to move into position. And that's the way I see it now. Because the vacuum has never been greater. Yeah. You look at the clowns around the world. All right, you want Let's go over to the... To the UK, the little boy Cameron over there. <laughs> then you got his neighbor, Hoan. <laughs> little Cameron, he's so cute, isn't he? Yeah, I think he went to one of those boys' schools where they got a lot of problems when he was a kid, you know, because he didn't come back with both of them, you know. So anyway, then you got Hoan over there, and he's in the same category. Another little, little loudmouth little boy with nothing behind him. You come to the States, you got Obama, man. An empty suit, if there ever was one, other than the empty suits before him with Bush. Well, we could have had Romney's empty suit. <laughs> we could have Romney. Again, you know. Oh, by the way, if anybody's tired of voting for a lesser of two evils, I'm saying Charles Manson, 2016. Let's put a real evil in there. Enough of these lesser of two evils. Get the lesser of evils. Go with the greatest evil you can do. If you're going to vote for a Republican Democrat, vote for Charles Manson. Yeah, I mean, let's stop this lesser of two evils stuff. You know, let's let's go the full route. So then you, you keep going back, and I'm saying the vacuum has never been greater. Look at the politicians in play. I mean, what do you got? You got Boner over there. You got Pelosi. You have McConnell. You have Reid. I mean, come on. How can anybody take these people seriously? So, so what I'm saying is the vacuum is so large, it could be filled with anything. So number one, occupy peace, no foreign entanglements, rebuild America. Bring all the troops home, close the bases, bring re- – and the other part is rebuild America. All the money that we're wasting in these foreign wars – Bring it back home. Restore the nation. You, you mentioned, and amen, and uh, let's uh, please plug OccupyPeace.us repeatedly throughout the rest of the program because that's how you build a movement is by getting this kind of underground movement started. 